Now, once upon a time, a long, long time ago, there was a king and a queen and a prince who lived in an enormous white castle with lots of towers and flags at one end of a long, long valley high in the mountains. Now, far up at the other end of the valley, right at the edge of the forest, lived a farmer and his wife and their daughter. And out in the yard, in a pig pen, lived an enormous black and white pig named Willie. Now, Willie slept all day in a patch of mud in the pig pen. The only time he would get up is when he heard the door of the farmhouse open and the farmer's wife would come out with two big buckets of slop, coffee grounds and banana peels and garbage of all kinds. And she would walk across the yard and when he heard her coming, he would kind of get up and struggle to his feet. He was enormous and look over at the trough where she would dump all the slop from the house. And then he would walk over there and sniffle around and sniffle around and eat up all the slop. Then he would walk back to the mud patch and go around it three times, just like a dog looking for a place to lie down and then settle down in the mud patch and go back to sleep. Well, it just so happened that way, way far back in the mountains, there lived a wicked witch. And she had built a castle for herself by magic. And it was all made of black rocks and had big towers itself. And she also had made by magic a huge, enormous dragon. And the dragon had red eyes. It had six legs, two in the front, two in the middle, and two at the back, and a very, very long tail, and two sets of wings on its back. And every day, the dragon lay outside the wicked witch's castle, sleeping, until she would give him a job to do. Now, the Wicked Witch used a lot of kids to take care of the castle, and she didn't feed, feed them very well, and they, some of them got thinner and thinner and thinner, and every once in a while, one of them would die, and she would have to get another kid to work in the castle. Well, it just so happened that on this day, the wicked witch came out of the castle up to the dragon and the dragon opened one red eye and looked at her and she said, I need another kid to work in the castle. Go to the valley and get me another kid. Well, the dragon shut his eye and for the rest of the day, kind of snoozed outside the castle. And then in the late afternoon, he took off and flew towards the valley. Now, two days before that, 
a messenger had gone all up and down the valley telling all the people that the king and the queen were having a big dance down at the castle and they wanted all the girls 18 years old to 21 years old to come to the castle and come to the dance and the prince would see which of those girls he liked and would marry and they would become the princess of the kingdom. Well, when the messenger got to the farmer's house, the farmer's daughter, who was 18 years old, said, Dad, Mom, can I go down to the dance? Can I go down to the dance? And they said, well, yeah, but it's a three-day walk. You're going to have to walk all that way by yourself. And she said, it's okay, I can do that. And they said, well, okay, you can leave tomorrow morning. And the first day you walk to a village and you can spend the night there. And then the next day you can walk to another village and spend the night there. And then the third day you can reach the castle. So the next morning, the farmer's daughter started off and over her shoulder, she carried a stick. And on the end of the stick was a sack with her clothes in them. And she walked all that day and she got to the first village. Well, she went in and found a little teeny inn. An inn is kind of like a hotel. And it had four rooms upstairs. And the hotel uh, owner and his wife gave her a nice uh, supper of soup and bread and butter and honey and a big glass of milk. And she went upstairs and got into bed and snuggled down under a very warm quilt and went sound asleep. Now, she knew she had to get up and leave by seven o'clock in the morning in order to reach the next village before dark because her dad had told her it was dangerous to be out in the dark. Well, when she opened her eyes, it was eight o'clock in the morning. She was an hour late. So she rushed around, got dressed, rushed downstairs, had a quick breakfast, and took off on the path to the next village. And she walked all day long as fast as she could, but she hadn't quite got to the next village when it started to get dark. Now on this day, the dragon had taken off from the wicked witch's castle and he had flown with his big wings over the hills and over the higher hills and over the very high hills and over the big mountains. And just as dark was coming into the valley, he flew down over the last hills and what did he see but a person walking along a path with a stick on her shoulder and she was about a mile away from a village. Well, he swooped up the valley and came back down low to the ground very quietly with his wings set and he glided along and he came up behind the farmer's daughter and she never even knew he was there and the next thing she knew, whack! His front claws had grabbed her around the waist and he flapped his wings and flew off over the low hills and over the medium hills and over the high hills and high mountains the witch's castle. Well, the next morning, Willie was lying sound asleep in his mud patch. And an animal walked out of the forest and walked across the barnyard 
and jumped over the fence into the pig pen. Now, it was hardly daylight. It was just, just getting light. And the animal walked over to Willie and bent down its head and with the long horn sticking out of its forehead, it poked really Willie in the rear end. And Willie goes, ah, ah, what's that? And he raises up his head and looks around. And he says, leave me alone. What are you doing? Leave me alone. Can't you think I have important things to do here? I've got to do a lot of sleeping. And his head went back down in the mud. Well, the unicorn, for that's what it was, bent its head down and gave Willie a sharper poke. And Willie got halfway up and he turned around and he said, can't you see that I'm doing something important here? I've got a lot of sleeping to do now. Leave me alone. <laughs> and back he went down onto the mud patch. Well, the unicorn put his head back and gave Willie a very sharp poke right in the rear end. And this time, Willie leaps to his feet and he turns around and he says, what are you doing? Leave me alone. And the unicorn said to Willie, I need your help, Willie. And Willie said, what do you mean you need my help? I don't help. I just lie here sleeping in the mud. And the unicorn told him, that the, witch, that the wicked witch had taken the farmer's daughter and he needed Willie's help to get her back. And Willie said, well, how can I help you? And the unicorn said, follow me. And he walked over to the pig pen fence and jumped lightly over into the farmyard. And Willie walked over to the fence and the unicorn said, come on, Willie, jump over the fence. And Willie said, are you crazy? Are you crazy? I'm a big fat pig. I can't jump one inch off the ground. And the unicorn said, oh, 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 I forgot. And he jumped back into the pig pen and with the tip of his horn, he lightly touched Willie right on the forehead. And then he jumped back over the pig pen and he said, okay, now Willie, jump. And Willie said, you're crazy. You're crazy. I can't jump an inch. And the unicorn said, just try, Willie. Just try. And so Willie said, okay, here goes. And he jumped. And he flew up over the fence and landed in the barnyard. Well, just at that moment, the sun was coming up, just coming up. And the farmer opened the door of the house, and here's what he saw. He saw his enormous black and white pig jump up over the fence and disappear in midair. And then he saw a kind of shimmery, little shimmery waves in the air of two little shimmery waves go across the uh, barnyard and into the forest and disappear. And he goes, what happened to Willie? Well, in the meantime, Willie is trotting along behind the unicorn. And he's trotting along and he's saying to himself, that was the greatest thing. I don't know how I ever got over that pig pen. And he started, he looked down at his feet, and instead of pointed pig's feet, he had a round foot on each front leg. And he said, Wait. And he looked back over his head and swished his little pigtail, but it wasn't a pigtail long, long white tail. And then he crossed his eyes and looked up 
and out of his forehead was coming a long horn. And he said, Oh, oh, I'm a unicorn. I've turned into a unicorn. I'm a unicorn. I'm just like you are. I'm a unicorn. And, and the unicorn in front said, Now, don't pay any attention, Willie. Just We've got things to do. You just keep following me. And Willie was saying, I'm a unicorn. I'm a unicorn. I'm so excited. I'm a unicorn. And they trotted through the forest, and they came <clears throat> to an open patch of ground. And Willie said, I'm a unicorn, but I don't understand why you needed my help. You're a unicorn. I'm a unicorn. Why did you need my help? And the unicorn said, <clears throat> Look over your back, Willie. <clears throat> and Willie looked over his back, and he saw two beautiful big wings floated, folded on his back. And he said, I, I've got wings. And then he looked at the unicorn, and he said, and you don't have any wings. And the unicorn said, yes, Willie, that's right. Some unicorns are born with wings, and some unicorns are not. I do not have wings, so I need you with wings to help me. Now, you have to go and get the farmer's daughter. And Willie said, uh, I don't know how to fly. And the unicorn said, it's really easy. You just trot across the grass, fold out your wings, and just beat them on either side, and watch what happens. So Willie said, okay, here goes. And he trotted across the grass of the open meadow and folded out his wings and flapped them in the air, and he took off. And he flew up higher and higher until he was higher than the trees. And he started flying around and around, and he was saying, this is really cool, I can fly. I can fly. And the unicorn watched him practice a little bit. And then he said, now, Willie, get going. There's not much time. So Willie took off and flew out of the valley. And he flew over the low hills and the medium hills and the high hills and the very high mountains. And as he started down on the other side, off in the distance, he saw the black castle. And lying on the ground in front of the castle was the dragon. And attached to a chain with her arms tied to a, uh, with a chain to a big pole right beside the dragon's head was the farmer's daughter. Because every time the dragon got a new person to help in the castle, they were chained for one day by the dragon's head, and he was so scary that they never tried to escape. Well, Willie flew and got closer and closer, and then he flew up one way, and he came down very fast and very low, right over the dragon's tail, over his back, and over his head. And as he went over the dragon's head, he said, I've come for the girl. And the dragon's two red eyes popped open. <clears throat> and he leaped to his feet and folded his two sets of wings out and took off after Willie. While Willie flew up in the air and the dragon was right behind him. And they flew through the air this way and that, this way and that. And the dragon couldn't quite catch Willie. But Willie couldn't quite get away. And Willie is ducking and flying, <clears throat> and he hears the dragon go, <sighs> and out of the dragon's mouth came a ball of fire about six feet across. Because you see, dragons have coals down in their belly. When they breathe deeply, the coals light on fire, and they can blow fireballs. Well, Willie looked and saw the fireball coming, and he ducked this way, and then he ducked that way as the dragon kept shooting fireballs out of its mouth at him. 
And if one of those fireballs had hit his wings, they would have burst on fire and he would have fallen to the ground. But he just managed to duck this way and that way, and the dragon stayed right after him. But the dragon couldn't hit him, and Willie couldn't quite get away. Well, finally, Willie decided to do something. So he flew up in the air in a big, enormous circle. And the dragon followed him. Well, the dragon was bigger than Willie. And Willie could make a small circle. And the dragon, because it was so big, had to make a big circle. And when they came out of the end of the circle, Willie was behind the dragon. And now the dragon was trying to get away, and Willie was chasing him through the air, this way and that way, flying through the air. And finally, Willie went straight up in the air and turned over and folded his wings, and he fell straight down, down, down. And he put his horn right into the dragon's neck, all the way up to his forehead. And he backed his wings off and pulled his horn out and flew up in the air, and the dragon gave a big scream and tried to get away, and green, yucky stuff came out of the dragon's neck. And Willie chased the dragon some more, and then Willie climbed straight up again turned over, folded his wings, and fell straight down <clears throat> and buried his neck, his horn in the dragon's neck. And more green, yucky stuff came out, and the dragon gave a great scream, and Willie backed his wings and pulled his horn out, and the dragon climbed straight up in the sky, higher, 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 and then it turned over on its back and fell down, down, down. Crash! It landed right outside the castle. Well, as soon as the dragon hit the ground, there was black smoke came up all along the dragon's body. Dragon's body, black smoke, black smoke. And when it blew away, there was nothing but a pile of ashes. Because you see, the dragon was made by magic. And when it died, the magic spell was broken. And there was nothing but a few little piles of ashes. Well, Willie flew down <clears throat> and landed beside the pole where the farmer's daughter was chained. And he reached his horn up. And with one flick of his head, he broke that chain, and then he walked really, really close to the farmer's daughter and kind of nudged her with her shoulder, and she knew she was supposed to get on. So she climbed up on his back. He folded his wings out and very gently trotted across the ground and flew away over the low hills, over the medium hills, over the high hills and high mountains and back down into the valley. Well, when he left the castle, all of a sudden, the castle walls started to shake and shake, and rocks started to fall off the castle, because you see, the same magic spell had created the castle. And when it was broken, the castle started to fall apart. Well, the kids in the castle all ran out as fast as they could, but the wicked witch was down in the bottom, stirring the big pot of yucky stuff for magic. And the castle completely collapsed on top of the wicked witch. And that was the end of her. Well, when Willie flew down into the valley, he saw a long line of girls going into the white castle. And he landed in some trees not far away. And the farmer's daughter slid off his back and gave him a big hug around his neck and ran to join all the other girls going to the party at the castle. 
Well, the next morning, Willie was back. Had Willie had flown back to the farmer's house, and actually that afternoon, just as the sun went down, because you see, there's only one time you can ever ever see a unicorn. You might see it out of the corner of your eye if you're very, very lucky. But the only time you can ever see it is just exactly when the sun goes down, when it just disappears, or just exactly when the sun comes up. The farmer was standing outside his door, and it was getting dark, and the sun was just going down, and he saw some shimmery stuff, two shimmery things come across the barnyard, and the next thing he saw was his big black and white pig, Willie, in mid-air over the fence of the pig pen, and Willie landed on the ground inside the pig pen, walked over to the mud patch, circled around it three times, and lay down and went to sleep. The farmer was astounded and went into the house. Well, the next morning, the farmer and his wife were having breakfast when there was a clattering and a, and a noise in the farmyard, and into the farmyard came six beautiful white horses pulling a beautiful carriage. And it stopped outside the farmhouse. And the door of the carriage opened, and the farmer's daughter jumped out, dressed in a beautiful, beautiful red dress. And she rushed in the house, and she said, Mom, Dad, I can't wait to tell you what happened. And behind her came a very, very handsome, young man. It was the prince, and he said, I had all the girls in the kingdom to the castle last night for a dance, and I would like to marry your daughter, and she would become the princess of the land, and we would like you and your wife to come down and live in the castle. Well, the farmer listened to all this, and then he walked to the back door and opened it and looked out across the farm, the barnyard at the pig pen. And then he turned around and he said, yes, we would love to come and live at the castle with you, but I just have one condition. And the prince said, what is it? And the farmer said, out back, there is a huge black and white pig named Willie. We would like to have him come with us and have a wonderful pig pen at the castle and that he be given all the best food left over in the castle's kitchen. And the prince said, it shall be done. And that is the end of the story. Did you like it? What was your favorite part? Do you think you could use your words or use crayons and draw a picture of your favorite part? That would be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? See you the next time.